now to generate a certain trajectory in the joint space. However, I'm really interested uh, in uh, assigning a trajectory in the operational space. What I do want to do is to be able to, for example, follow the contour of a certain object in order to make some work on it. So I'm, I want to be able to, and we will see, for example, segment and a, uh, and a circle. So I want to be able to assign a segment in a Cartesian space with a certain time law. And then uh, once they have done that, uh, with the inverse kinematic algorithms, we will find uh, at each simple time the Q that, followed by the no lever controller, will provide this position for the NFS. Position and orientation. We will see also the orientation. OK. If I have a 3D curve, I can uh, make use of a convenient tool uh, that is uh, it's a parameterized representation by a scalar parameter. Mathematically, the position is a certain function of a scalar S. S is a real number. In any moment of my curve from PI to PF, I can recognize three significant directions, let me say. The tangent direction, that is the partial derivative of P with respect to the parameter. And then uh, I have uh, the normal direction that is given by the uh, partial derivative twice with respect to S, normalized with respect to the norm, because this is a unit vector, of course. And then I do have uh, simply the closure of the, uh, correct, the, the frame. So B is, is equal T cross vector N. What if I want to represent a segment? Well, if I want to represent a segment, it's very easy because P is function of S is equal P I, which is a number, function of S is equal to PI. If S is equal 1, here I have uh, PI minus PI and the result is, is uh, no, I'm sorry, not is equal 1. If S is equal the length of, uh, of the segment, mm -hmm. this is just simplified PI and PI is equal and I'm here. In all the intermediate value of S, I'm on a segment. Okay? So S actually really represents the, param the parameter that describe a segment from PI to P final. And what is uh, the uh, tangent of a segment? Well, it's a unit vector that represents uh, the direction connecting I to F and is given by the partial derivative of uh, here, is given by the partial derivative of P with respect to S. Okay? I think this is clear to everyone. PF minus PI is the vector that goes from PI to PF and then divided by the norm is the normalization. So it's a unit vector. Okay? It's just the direction. The other two vectors are undefined for a segment. So if I make the derivative twice, it's zero. So it's arbitrary. And this is clear, because you are just going in a direction, uh, and the other two vectors are undefined. Well, I can uh, start imagining now what uh, I can do in the operational space. Because S 
represent the path from zero to the length of the segment. If I assign to S a time law, well, it means that I'm able to go from I to F and in the operational space, I, I can assign the desired velocity profile. For example, the tra trapezoidal velocity profile. That we have. Okay. Circle. Well, circle. We build uh, the circle. It's it's easier than it seems because we are going to build it. Translate the region and rotate the circle. It means that I can represent a circle in 3D. It's it's very easy. What is the velocity? The tangent is given by the derivative with respect to s, and then there is the rotation here. If we make the computation, it means that uh, the velocity is this vector and then rotated according to this matrix R. Okay? So if I assign for your uh, project uh, to follow a certain circle in 3D, this is the way you can build the, the path. Okay? Okay, if I have a position, it's very easy how to, it's very easy how to build the desired trajectory. I just assign to S the time law, as I told you, because the time derivative of P with respect to time is the partial derivative of it with respect to S, and then the derivative of s with respect to time. It means that with p you assign the path, and in the variable s you assign the time law, because the velocity of p is in s dot, okay? And t is the unit vector represented the direction of the velocity. Somehow, with the couplet, the path from 
the time law. Okay, so we first build the path and then we assign a time law and we have a trajectory. And if I want to build a segment, this is the way I do it. And the velocity is p dot equal s dot multiplied by the vector. So the velocity is in s. I can do whatever I want with s, but it's separated from the path. The path is always a segment if I use this structure for p. And then uh, when I compute the velocity, the velocity is s dot multiplied by this unit vector. So I decouple it and very convenient to do it. The same if uh, I'm building a circle. This is the position. If I make the time derivative of p of the position, what I do have is equal the rotation multiplied here. And uh, if you look here, the time law is in S dot. And then the direction is given by the same as we have seen earlier here. Okay? So really, S embeds the trajectory, the time law information. Okay. With the position, it's very easy, okay? It's just geometry. You, you are going to, to do it uh, uh, mainly during the project. We are not, to, we are not going to, to, to do it uh, in a practice lesson. I mean, the building of uh, 3D trajectories. But the issue is, is, is always with orientation. Okay, if I, have the need, if I need to assign a certain orientation, I want to assign a path for the orientation and a time law. So I want to assign a trajectory. And uh, we have seen uh, uh, one example where it's very easy to, uh, to make a mistake in a sense that it's very easy to assign trajectories that are not, let me say, um, uh, current with our intuition of a rotation. For example, as I said, I want to rotate my mobile from the vertical to the horizontal uh, configuration. And uh, we, I think, 100% uh, of the person that needs to do it, we would rotate around that axis. Okay. If uh, we, we make just a simple interpo interpolation or roll pitch uh, you, what happened is something like that. It's not convenient if you are holding a tool at the end effect of a robot and you are making some, uh, some uh, applications. You want to have a clear geometric interpretation. So, okay, if I implement uh, the same reasoning as for the 3D point to roll pitch U, for example, and I draw a segment in roll pitch U, what happened is that a segment in roll pitch U is not what we would expect, does not keep a constant rotation direction. Okay? It's exactly the counterexample that we saw. You can do it, of course. It's not, it's not, uh, it's physically possible. It's not a problem. But the behavior of the end effector is not nice. Okay. Well, I do need the clear geometric interpretation. I want to assign also the direction of rotation during the change of rotation of the end effector. And uh, I do a, s a first step that is similar to what we have uh, uh, seen when we built the orientation error with the axis um, angle representation. We don't, um, we, we, we consider the rotation, in particular we consider the rotation that is needed to go from the initial to the final rotation, okay? So now our concept uh, uh, generalized to rotations I know what is the initial rotation. I know what is the final rotation. I do not extract uh, 
roll pitch yo or quaternions or whatever. I stay at rotation. I know the initial and the final. It means that uh, I know what is the rotation that goes from one to the other. And this is the rotation. Okay? If I just make my, my computation, I know that uh, in order to the final one is given by the initial multiplied the, the incremental rotation and then if I explicit uh, here I left multiply by the inverse of the initial rotation it means by trans the transpose from the properties of rotation matrices it means that I do know the incremental rotation then from this incremental rotation I extract the axis and the angle in this way I'm sure that the axis is constant is one, is a number Okay, I have the initial, the final the rotation that goes from the initial to the final and I exit axis angle from that rotation it means that I'm sure that I do know the unit vector representing the direction of rotation and I do know the final angle. That's all I need. Okay. The, it's done. I mean, the, if uh, if uh, if you followed me in this reasoning, uh, it's done. Because now I need to reason in in that sense, in the sense of rotation and angle around which. So I build a matrix. Okay. At each simple. Uh, sampling time. I build a matrix that is function of the time in the time uh, in the beginning t equal zero. This is the identity matrix, and at tf this is equal to the displacement matrix. What is important is that this matrix will uh, be built by me as uh, a rotation around uh, the constant axis r with the theta increasing up to the final time. Okay? So let us see. <coughs> this is the, the initial one. Okay, let me write it. The angular velocity 
is this one. Okay? The angular velocity is given by a unit vector r constant and the scalar that is the time derivative of theta. It means that the trapezoidal velocity profile, for example, will be assigned to theta. Then r will remain constant and then at each certain time you will be able to build the current rotation matrix that will represent your desired and effective rotation. Okay? So now what is important, what we have seen today uh, apart from uh, an overview of uh, motion planning and motion control, uh, just to give you an idea of uh, how I mean, complex and wide is the topic of assigned movement, desired movement to robot, what uh, we have seen uh, and uh, you will need uh, for the project uh, is the capability to assign a desired trajectory it means path plus time law in the Cartesian space to your controller. Your, you are going to make the, the differential inverse kinematics. Okay? This is required by all of you. Also, I mean, for, for, for the Magistral Informatica, that in addition, we, you will also develop the dynamic low level controller for the project. Okay? Uh, you will uh, assume that is perfect, your low level controller, so the Q dot going out from your inverse kinematics, you just need to integrate. And this is the real Q, because everything is perfect. Okay? They will uh, send it to the low level controller, and you will have an additional control loop uh, on the, on the uh, inner control loop. Okay? So you are able now to uh, to assign segment uh, circles and uh, orientation with uh, a trapezoidal velocity profile. In general, with the desired time loop, but uh, we saw the trapezoidal velocity profile. Okay? And next Monday, you are going to build the function that we saw. Input, some desired uh, displacement at final time, output, uh, the trapezoidal velocity profile at each simple time. Okay? Is it possible to define the orientation with the turning uh, Yes, this is the easiest way because you know, uh, axis angle, you already have the axis around which you want to rotate. Mm -hmm. So this is really the easiest way. And then you have the rotation method, so you can do whatever you want with the rotation But there is no need to, to go with the Questions? No? Have a nice weekend and see you Monday.